party. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to your first ISAT symposium presentation of today. We're so happy you're here. Um, just before we get started, a friendly reminder to check your devices, cell phone, whatever you may have on you. Make sure they're silenced, vibrate, um, so we don't disturb our presenters. We're going to start this morning with Matt and Kabir, who are presenting on the intelligence trough. And uh, please save your questions for the end of today. Thanks. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kabir Medley. I'm Matt Chamberlain. And today we'll be presenting you our ISAT Senior Capstone Project called ITROF. So here's the rundown of our presentation of what we're going to be covering today. We'll go into the background of our project. We'll be explaining what our project, the monitoring alert system, is. We will be discussing what defines it, how we designed it, the implementation and testing of our, of our system, and the assessing the value of our system. And then we'll finally come to our closing remarks. So here's our background about our project. Our sponsor, Professor Paul Goodall, owns a farm in Madison County, Virginia, where he raises cattle. And he discovered that the Department of Agriculture has a program set up where it's encouraging farmers to fence off their lands from adjacent wetlands and natural waterways. Um, when, if farmers do this, then the, uh, the Department of Agriculture will grant them uh, federal grants called environmental easements in order to let them still have normal operating procedures. The reason why the Department of Agriculture is doing this is to reduce the amount of pollution within the watersheds of Virginia. And Professor Paul Goodall, like many other farmers, is adopting alternative farming methods. For him specifically, he has adopted altern uh, rotational grazing, where he is moving his cattle from one pasture to the next throughout the course of a year. All right, so the environmental impact of this is, uh, so located on Professor Goodall's farm are two wetlands out uh, outlined in red. This wetland has a pond that leads into a stream that feeds into the Rappahannock watershed. And uh, within this wetland, uh, Professor Goodall actually participated in a tree planting project in order to strengthen the riparian buffer zone in order to uh, cut down on the waste and pollution coming from raising livestock. Livestock waste is really, really high in nutrients such as uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, which are limiting factors in aquatic ecosystems. Um, they cause algae blooms, which grow exponentially, and then they use up all the nutrients, and that eventually causes a die-off, which causes oxygen depletion in the aquatic ecosystem. Now we'll be going to defining what the monitoring alert system is. So our stated problem is uh, that through rotational grazing, the cows are cut off from their natural water source, so they have to have water troughs put into each pasture. The uh, downside of this is that these water troughs are mechanically filtered. Uh, they kind of operate with the same mechanism that's kind of in the back of your toilet, and it's prone to failure over time, being exposed to the weather. And there are really only two, uh, you, you can only really uh, check it if you have a like visual check, and there's only two ways. You can either go check it uh, with a trail cam, or you can use a, uh, or you can go physically there to each water trough, but this is an inefficient uh, method and a waste of time for the farmer since they can be doing other activities on their farm. So we're going to talk about some of the goals and requirements that we defined. The goals that our sponsor wanted was to be able to, prepare, to use it to prepare for the possible environmental easement on his farm and also to improve the productivity of the farm. In order to meet these goals, we developed a series of requirements that the system must have. First, to be able to trigger alerts about the water level from the troughs as well as the pump house temperature and well pressure to be able to have multiple troughs communicate with one central hub located at the pump house, to be able to send alerts uh, from the times of 7 in the morning and 3 in the afternoon, and to be able to have a low installation op and operational cost. All right, so our proposed solution was to create a monitoring alert system that was able to monitor a pump house and a water trough. It would monitor the well pressure and the temperature of the pump house and the water level of the water troughs. We did this through the use of available technologies in order to send a text message alert to the farmer. And now we'll be giving you a demonstration of uh, what the, how the system works. Now if I can get a volunteer and I could use your phone number, that would be very appreciated. Okay. Sure. Let's go. It's uh, 703. 703. 975-1387. So what Matt's doing is that he's using the water bottle to simulate the water level within a trough, and inside that water bottle is the sensor that we use at the troughs to 
uh, determine if they're too low uh, uh, and be able to send our alerts. So now we will start our system. And momentarily, you should be able to receive your alerts uh, in a couple seconds. There we go. All right, you got it? Perfect. Wonderful. Now we'll be talking about the design of how, of how we created the monitoring alert system. So here's a big picture overview of the whole system. We have two water troughs and then one pump house, and these are the components used at each of the, uh, of the uh, device that we have. All right, so this is a diagram of uh, what's going on at each of the water troughs, it's kind of what's in this box right here. So this is the water level sensor that uh, sends a signal to our Arduino that is powered by a solar panel and battery that uh, then sends the, the, the alert from the uh, sensor to our XB, which runs at 900 megahertz, which is an unlicensed commercial band. And it's really good for sending, dis uh, uh, sending data over a like, long range because uh, since Wi-Fi doesn't go that far and uh, radio frequencies can. And it sends that data from the water trough to the pump house, which is our central location. Here are the components of the pump house. We, uh, we have three different types of wireless technology used here. We have the wireless unit of the XB receiving the information coming from the water troughs. We have a wireless access point communicating with an Android phone, which is able to send our messages uh, from the system outwards. And here we have the cellular connection of the phone to be able to send that to a user's mobile device. <clears throat> now we're going to begin talking about the implementation and testing for our system. So beginning last year, in the fall of 2018, we was when we started this project, and we have broken down our process into six phases. The first phase was being able to test how far our wireless units, the XPs, can be able to communicate with each other. We did this in the lab environment by going to different positions in our lab and seeing uh, what angles we could also have it set up at to the point until we could lose communication. And then we took this outside onto the campus to see how far we could go until we lost signal between both wireless units. The next phase was to be able to determine thresholds for our sensors. These are going to be the points in which the sensors will send an alert to the user's mobile device. So we played around with seeing which would be the best point to send our alerts. The third phase would be able to integrate the Raspberry Pi to be able to receive threshold crossings from the, uh, from the wire troughs through the use of, uh, email, of, of email to SMS. So originally our idea is that we would take our data and send it as an email to an email gateway. And the gateway would then automatically turn that into an SMS message that could be received at a, a user's mobile device. The fourth phase would be able to add an additional water trough to our system. This was to test how strong our system can be and uh, how it would uh, react having multiple inputs coming into one location. The fifth phase would be to send alerts through use of an application on the Android market called GSM Modem. Uh, through the use of this application, we were able to move away from having a conversion from email to SMS and just have pure SMS through the use of a cellular connection. And the final phase would be to go out into the field and test our system. All right, so here you can see in, on this map the locations of the water troughs. This is water trough one, and this is water trough two. See a picture of both of them there. And as you can see, there's the uh, microcontroller post that's about 20, 20 up to 30 feet away from the, uh, from the water troughs. And so when installing our system at the water troughs, we would house our uh, water level sensors in a PVC casing like this in order to protect it. And then we would install that inside a central cavity of the water trough so no cows could get, uh, manage to get to it. And we ran a wire from that sensor uh, to 25 feet to the microcontroller post where we housed our uh, Arduino and our solar panel in uh, a battery box within two by four uh, casings to protect them from cows possibly running up against them. Here we have the location of the pup house on the farm, signified by this circle in the below picture here. This is the shed which holds the tank where the pump will be able to uh, pressurize the wire to different locations of the troughs. And within the, within the shed, we have our locations of our components. Within this box, we held the Android device, our microcontroller, and our Raspberry Pi. 
And this wire leads up to the outside on the top of the shed where it holds our wireless unit being able to receive information from both wire troughs. At the pump house, we had set it up to install the two sensors there, a pressure sensor with, and the uh, connected to a valve on the tank to be able to monitor the pressure of the well that's on the farm, and also a temperature sensor to monitor the air temperature so we could determine when uh, we would reach freezing points uh, and send an alert then. The other components were then placed inside a plastic hard box to protect them from both weather and possible pests coming into the shed. So how are we able to send our alerts? We, uh, as mentioned before, we use an Android application called GSM Modem. It's an app that's available on the Android market. And the way it works is that it's installed on your Android device. And when running and connected to a wireless access point, it can turn that wireless device into a GSM modem, which means that it can take that information coming from the water troughs and then send it through a cellular connection as an SMS message. So whatever Matt had done to uh, create um, our sensor alerts, that would then be sent, that information would be sent to the pump house. GSM modem would take that information and then send it as an SMS message to the user's mobile device. And here you can see some of the alerts that we were able to send. We were able to send an alert from trough two. We were able to send a temperature alert from the pump house and also an alert from trough one. <clears throat> All right, so he, here's uh, uh, the, our field testing uh, data. from the, So for the first time we went to st uh, start our pilot study to the farm, we ran into an issue with uh, we didn't have a long enough wire for between the microcontroller post and the water trough. So we tried to come up with a solution on the spot by uh, trying to string a bunch of jumper cables together. However, this didn't really work. So for the first week, we only were really receiving data from the pump house. Um, we were receiving temperature alerts from 7 in the morning all the way to usually around uh, 9 or 10 at night. And that ran from March 5th to March 10th until our uh, mobile service plan ran out. We renewed it on March 15th and went back to the farm the second time to install another water trough, which was running fine for about three days until we started receiving water level alerts. And so we thought the water trough was low. However, by the time we uh, came back to visit the farm again, we actually found out that the, uh, the wire from the water level sensor was uh, cut and eaten by one of the cows. <laughs> so <laughs> we had to do some work with the pest proofing. But, so it ran for another three days till March 20th until the cows decided to go back and eat the power cord to the, <laughs> to the microcontroller. And then it just stopped sending data after that. So now we're going to be talking about how we assess the value of our system. All right, so these are the cost of goods for our project. Um, as you can see for the pump house, the most expensive component was the Android Blue, which, we, which is about 100 bucks. Um, However, upon gaining more experience about with this project and learning more about the hardware we're using, that price can be dropped down to probably around ten dollars. Um, most expensive part of the water troughs, the solar panel and battery. However, the price of that can't really go down too much because just that's how much solar panels cost. The total cost of the pump house was two hundred thirty-eight dollars. The cost of the mobile plan that we bought for the phone was thirty-five dollars. And the total cost per water trough was $285. However, the possible cost for the pump house is about $91. We, we can cut out uh, $30 off the mobile plan now that we know what we actually need to make it only $5. And the possible cost per water trough is about $172. <clears throat> All right, so these are some of our competitors. Um, so Gallagher Group Limited is the only other water trough or livestock water trough monitoring out there. However, they are only located and they only sell their products within Australia and New Zealand. Um, so their system costs $500 for, for one water level a monitor sensor and a tablet. And each additional water trough costs 300 bucks through them. A downside of their system is it doesn't, uh, it doesn't send you an alert on your phone. Like you don't have, uh, you won't get remote uh, alerts. You won't. So the way that tablet works is usually you bow it like by a light switch or there's a desk mount for it. And it's, it's only local, so if, if you're out of range of the, one of the uh, water trough sensors, uh, it, it won't send you an alert. Uh, then the next company is Bentec Systems, which is a Canadian company that uh, more or less does more industrial pipeline water monitoring, and, but also oil pipeline monitoring. 
and I couldn't get a price uh, or a cost for any of them based so they mostly do contracts. And then currently the, uh, the solution that Professor Goodall is using on his farm are the Spartan cameras, which they cost $600 each, $5 a month in, uh, in the mobile plan to run, and then a $3 a month uh, uh, like Spartan port. Or so now we're going to discuss some of the challenges that we experienced throughout the course of our project. Uh, the first challenge that was very critical was being able to configure our wireless units between the troughs and pump house. So testing how far we could go uh, to still be able to send information, uh, figuring out which angle would be the best to send information so we still have some line of sight to our troughs is very vital. And being able to understand how much information can flow from both the troughs to the pump house and understanding and ensuring that there wouldn't be any blockage of information and in sending that data to a mobile device. The next challenge that we had to overcome was integrating SMS messaging through the use of the GSM modem application. And this was uh, very daunting because we had to rewrite a lot of our code that we had first written to now incorporate this new uh, tool. So having to understand how the tool worked, understanding how it was able to allow our information to be sent from one point to the next was very important. The next was being able to integrate the system in the field. So going to the farm and actually installing all of our components running the wire underground from the sensor all the way to the microcontroller post and trying to keep it safe from cattle was very difficult. And the final one was being able to work with three different wireless technologies. As I mentioned before, we had to deal with the wireless technology between our wireless units called the XPs, which use a protocol called Zigbee, which is used a, a Wi-Fi protocol that is sent through long range distances. The other one was being able to use a actual access point to be able to have communication between our Raspberry Pi and our Android device. And the next technology we had to work with was cellular communication, sending our information through a cellular connection to a user's mobile device. So these are some future works that we think the project could benefit from in order to improve it for uh, long-term use. The first one is to be able to access the system from a remote location. Uh, so if there's something wrong with the system and you can't get there physically and you want to see from a software perspective what could be wrong with it, having an engineer being able to have remote access to the system and seeing maybe something's wrong with any of the scripts or uh, the flow of data would be very important and helpful to determining some troubleshooting problems. The next is cattle proofing. We want to ensure that cattle are not able to get into our wires and eat them and that we can still receive information to the mobile device. Implementing the Zigbee wireless mesh architecture, this is the uh, our network architecture that is used by the Zigbee protocol. If there's multiple troughs that are able to communicate with each other and are also communicating to the pump house, and if one trough loses its connection to the pump house, it can still send its information through the other trough's connections to the pump house and still send that information to a user mobile device. The next would be to add more wire troughs to the system. Professor Goodall has many other troughs that have not been integrated into the system yet, so being able to add those and so he can have uh, information about his entire property would be very beneficial. Uh, we want to also add more sensors to our system. That would include temperature sensors for the wire troughs to be determined if they were freezing or not there. And also to be able to take pictures of the uh, troughs so that we can physically see it when we're from a remote location, uh, the maintenance that is on the trough and if they need any fixing. Uh, the final uh, feature work that could be beneficial was to be able to impl uh, implement degrees of severity for our alerts. So uh, right now what we have is just the, we send an alert. It doesn't know if it's very bad or if it's okay. So being able to tell from different ranges how critical the measurements are would be very beneficial for the system. So what did we learn for our project? Uh, this experience, while challenging at times, was terribly rewarding. Uh, it was really interesting being able to try our ideas in our lab environment and then taking it to the farm and seeing whether or not it would work. Um, Talking about our relationship with our sponsor, it was really cool being able to see what he wanted and listening to what the, what those desires were and doing the best we could to meet those desires. Um, my experience with this project, I really, really enjoyed it because I have a passion for the environment and I got to combine my passion for the environment with also my TNS background and I really found it enjoying because of that. And now we'll enter our closing remarks. First, we'd like to acknowledge some people uh, who helped us in this project. Uh, first, our sponsor, Professor Paul Goodall, for being able to lend his time and farm. Uh, without him, we wouldn't have this amazing opportunity to go and work there and see how uh, lab work can translate into field work. 
We'd also like to thank Dr. Emil Salib, our advisor, for his guidance and assistance on the project, be it from software-related issues to hardware-related issues. He always had time for us to uh, help us troubleshoot our problems and figure out what was wrong. We'd also like to thank Mr. Safa Badri for being able to order the equipment we needed for to make this system possible. And finally, we'd like to thank our friends and family for supporting us for the last almost a year and a half now while working on this project. So now we'll begin taking questions from the audience. What, what would you like to know? <laughs> can you... Oh, go ahead. I mean, can you differentiate between big truck has a problem, does it give you different uh, signals? Yes, so... What number? Yeah, so we've, uh, we've uh, assigned the troughs one and two specifically, and uh, both of them are being used at different times. So if one trough is being used more than the other, then an alert will only go for that one. The other one will still stay uh, normal. I saw a hand in the back. Uh, through the development of the project, what was probably the most difficult part in either building, assembling, taking it out there, setting it up? Um, from a from the lab part, the most difficult part was getting the three technologies to work together, at least from my perspective. Uh, just figuring out how to turn data and have it transmitted through diff three different methods was very, very challenging. Uh, then going to the farm and actually seeing how from, you know, we had a small table like this doing our work on, and then seeing increasing that to 25 feet was very challenging to overcome. What would you say? I was definitely challenged a lot because of the, the water level sensor is 25 feet away. That just about posed an issue because um, a little bit of the wire got exposed and then the cow ate it. It's all about the cows, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the enemies. Yeah. Yeah. They had to reach up pretty high to get that wire, too. <laughs> they really wanted it. Yeah. Yes? Have you considered taking it a step further in marketing? Um, yes, I have actually. I've talked to the head of the Center for Entrepreneurship and uh, I plan on taking this through the Summer Accelerator Program. I have horses. Okay. So I would be very interested. Sweet. I really booked uh, enough stocks, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have 90% of that. <laughs> Yes. For the design of that box there, is that a Pelican case that you use? It's like a... It's, uh, a, it's an off awesome Pelican. Yeah. It's, it, it's like the same. It's it's waterproof. It's weatherproof. Um, you just didn't want the cows to be able to get to the Genius. sensitive components. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Go on once. Go on twice. All right, then. Thank you all for coming to our presentation. We really appreciate it, and we hope you learn more about iTroph. So, I, I, I'd like to make... I would like to make uh, a couple of remarks. I want to thank Paul for really uh, uh, giving us the opportunity, giving really the students the opportunity to conduct uh, a real-life uh, experiments uh, on his farm. This is an opportunity that not many students really get to experience, so I, I really want to thank Paul. For, I try to I try to stay out of his way <laughs> and treat him as a as the regular customers. So I have not interfered one single time of whatever he wants. And uh, to his credit, he was always available to the students to give them guidance and um, uh, carefully uh, make them feel very comfortable that they can do it. And I am very proud of Matt and Kabir for a, a, an exceptional uh, a, a, a product that he came up with, and it is working. I mean, it is not lab working, it is working in the field. And I had the opportunity to go actually with them in the last trip, which I am glad that I didn't miss it, so see the real uh, installation uh, on the ground. So again, I, I'm very appreciative of the wonderful work that he did. say something? Yeah. I, I, I wanted to add just my thanks to you guys for, for what you did. And, you know, Matt, when you said an opportunity to use your technical skills to address an environmental issue, you know, that, that's what I say it is. And, uh, you know, it's really pleasing to me. The farm was uh, developed by my grandfather and then my father. He spent his entire life expanding it and improving it. 
and he passed away two years ago. But his desire was to make farm even better. And uh, what you guys are doing, allowing us to fence off the stream, plant the trees, set up the riparian buffers, keep the water clean, uh, and satisfy the renter who's now running the farm that he knows the water trough is working okay. Beautiful. So guys, uh, really well done. The last time I saw your presentation, uh, it's like night and day. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> we were hiding. They were hiding. <laughs> so again, wonderful job. Plenty of time to mingle.